but you didn't vote for that one. When you had the chance, you voted for this bad boy. <laughs> also joining us on the couch, you know her as Nerdist.com's editor-in-chief, Rachel Hine. Hey. Hey. Can you please show off your um, hair clip? Because it's the best thing I've seen <gasps> today. It's Ooh. a skeleton hand. It's like Too going scary. first base with a skeleton. Too like, scary. Yeah, oh. That's nice. first base? For me. Touching, <laughs> touching hair? Yes. Okay. You are joining us. Of course, hopefully you've read up to the first 10 chapters of this book. Hit us up in that chat. Let's get into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's, let's get our wrinkle on, says Play Win. Let's get <laughs> yeah. our wrinkle on. Not you too. I'm, I'm <laughs> so against that one. <laughs> we better do that. Let's, oh, are you ready to play the game? Are you ready, ready to play one? one? That's the whole point of That's this book. You. That's you. That's us. That's, That's all of us. Oh, Man, right. so have we all read this before? Or no. you have not? This is your first time. My first time I've ever read it. And you guys have okay. read it before? I've this read it before, be listened to it before, so this is technically my third go. Now, listened by Will Wheaton was yes. the, mm -hmm. is the audiobook uh, Who I narrator. rate. I mm -hmm. think he does a great job. Mm -hmm. So Rachel and I had a little chat skis beforehand, mm -hmm. and we realized how different it is reading this book the second time. The mm. first time, this is my impersonation of me reading the book the first time. That was fun! <laughs> right? That's how that went. Now mm. it's... <laughs> mm. <laughs> he's got some things to say, Ernest Klein, who mm. only wrote the book in 2011. Mm. So this is a very, very new book. He's read, um, sorry, written a second one since Armada. Of don't bother. Is it a sequel yeah. to this? No. no. Oh, it's a separate? Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, This is not a series. This is a one and done. It is a That's one it. and I'm done. I'm assuming the ending of the story is going to end at the end of this book. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Great. So, so it's, Armada's totally separate, and some of the critiques that I've heard about this book, which we can get into, I think actually really more apply to Armada yes. than this, which is that because they both have a lot of pop culture references, specifically mm -hmm. 80s geeky pop culture references, which are our bread and butter in the Very world appealing. that we all mm -hmm. live in and work in here, Nerdist, Geek and Sundry, Geek Bomb, like that's... That's our day to day. And so I don't think that this particular book rests on that. I think that it elevates it I and agree. it adds to it. But I think the first time I read it was the same. I read it so yes. fast. And this actually is a book that got me back into reading because right. I got um, my degree in English and just spent years and years Brag and years reading and. You well. could have done something with your life, but here you are. Yeah, no, no. Oh, me? <laughs> We're all here. Absolutely. Yeah. I know. I know. But, but I just, when you do something for, like, work or school and you get, like, bogged oh, down yeah. by reading all the time, and I had to read a lot of, like, not super fun stuff, and so, and then freelance writing and doing stuff and had just dropped off and wasn't reading for fun anymore. Mm -hmm. And some, my boyfriend recommended this book to me, and I read it in, yeah. like, one sitting almost. Yeah. Just couldn't get enough of it. Gave it to my little brother, mm -hmm. who was like looking up all the Gave references. Gave it to my bigger yeah. brother, who loved it. Yeah. That's fun. And That's this, this got yeah. me back into it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go back and look at all the sci-fi and fantasy that I've missed in the past couple years. So it's really weird to come back and read it and think, oh, man, I zipped. Because, I mean, I was hooked from the beginning. Mm -hmm. The world building in this yes. is so great. Yes. And you guys were saying that you weren't as familiar with the pop culture references the first time you read it. And now that um, you like you know more. I mean, my life has, I haven't become like an editor of a nerd website. Sure, yeah. Um, so for mine, like, yeah. I, I mean, I was born in the 90s, 86. So <laughs> anything kind of before mm -hmm. that that came out, like I wasn't the 16 year old putting the quarters in the arcade. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Like I was a Nintendo It's safe to say we all grew girl. up in the 90s. So yeah. we yes. have, a, it's, uh, ours is not Commodore 64, but literally like Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. N64, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, yeah. yes. Sega Genesis. That's where we're at. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Maybe that'll be the sequel. Yeah. Yeah. They'll. Oh gosh. Let me <laughs> update it. But yeah, I think now it'll be called reboot. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't do that. Oh, they should do that. They should do a movie of that. Don't. They should Hunter. do a reboot movie. Don't, don't, don't put joke. that bad juju they out into the world. Like, but They're just make it good. Listening. Just make it good. That's all. It's not hard. Reboot was not good. Make it good. But it tried. It it's not hard. Of it's it's reading. <laughs> So what is this book all about? Well, yeah. we spoke about Ernest Klein, who's uh, he'd actually previously written the film Fanboys, who my mixed bag for me, mixed bag for right. me. But I loved things about that movie so much, and it got so much of geek culture so right. Exactly. And, great. And um, the guy who hosts my Dungeons and Dragons every single week directed Fanboys. Oh, great! So who who directed Fanboys? Kyle Newman. Kyle Newman. That's oh, great. Yeah. Oh, yes. Great cast. I mean, legitimate nerd. For sure. Oh, everybody involved. It seemed like everybody involved in that movie. Oh, legitimate nerd. Mad nerds. So, yeah. So, now that the table is set, let's dine in and discuss what we thought of the first part of the book. We set mm -hmm. it up. It is the year 2045. And mm -hmm. that's called the near distant future. 
So this is something that we could actually live to see the day of. So it's all about a little kid who's now 18. His name's Wade Watts. Mm -hmm. He's orphaned. He lives in poverty. He basically hides behind the laundry, like the washing machine, or he finds his own solace. Finding a structure built in with all these abandoned cars and he you know, powers up his own computer to something called the Oasis. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a virtual reality that has taken over the world. You log in and everything happens in this, including millions of worlds, different worlds from different real, um, fantasy and mm -hmm. sci-fi movies, so cool. TV I know. shows. Come on. <laughs> I know. Come on. Everything you, oh, I wish that was true. It is true in this, which yeah. is why it's so much, uh, it's, it's obvious why you would want to spend time in the Oasis instead of real life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what this story is all about, that shift in virtual reality to actual reality. Oh, I've got so many thoughts about this whole thing. So yeah, especially thoughts. because the it's this dystopian future that they're living in, you know, and it's see I think reading it now I got a bigger chill down my spine than I did hits the nail reading on the head. it a few years ago. Sure. I don't know if that's just the the world right now, but just looking at they've got economic an economic crisis, probably crisis gonna of water. happen. Yeah. Probably gonna happen. Everyone is living in poverty. Probably already started Stacks. happening. Trailers. Yeah. Love that. Things called stacks, which That's you can the cover. see on the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they literally. Before I even read the book, I, I saw I knew this cover, and yeah. I thought this was an amazing image. Yes. Yep. And I was like, I cannot wait to see this imagery in a film to really scare the shit out of some people. Yeah. That might not be aware of some. Like I'm like, I get it. I get it. It's in the future. This is gonna be great. But then I'm seeing some of the behind the scenes photos of the movie. Uh -uh. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And I'm like, I don't think they're doing this. I think they're do like they're filming in London, probably because of tax breaks with this well, movie. I and it's, that ca you know. Was that of the actual stacks, though? Not the stacks, but like, like the neighborhood that the kid lived in. So I'm hoping uh, they're going to CG some stacks or oh. something. Like, I think they're changing up how he lives. Is it? But you, we got, we read through. Do we read through to chapter 10 or up to chapter 10? I read th through chapter 10. I'm waiting to read chapter 11. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you think they're filming a different part so of the book? So it might book. be when he gets, we'll to, get there. But to the Middletown? Mm -hmm. Better be. Maybe. <laughs> mm. Right. But making it look like. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Better yeah, be. Can do that. Again, according. Like I, Middle America is such a big part of like. It yeah, is. And I, and I looked up really quickly like on IMDb and Wikipedia, whatever, and they were saying they're filming in London and are making it seem like dystopian near future Oklahoma, which is where, the, where oh. he lives. So again, maybe we haven't seen maybe the pictures sets, of that maybe set. Uh, I hope, but I'm just like, you gotta get the Sets stacks the tone in there. Yeah. Right away Sets the tone. <laughs> cover for a reason. There's everything that you need to know. It's mm -hmm. like, life is shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, escapism, which is something that I am very fond of. He's, he's, he's literally escaping. The, every part of escape, you know, you just escape nailed into it. a world you can be anyone you wanna be. You can look however you wanna look. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I, I noticed how. There is a corporation which we'll get into that wants to monetize the um, the game. Not only that, but also remove anonymity. Mm -hmm. And there's something that Wade finds absolute solace in how he feels whole is that he has his anonymity in there. Something that I'm not a fan of online. I well, own it if you say it. Fair. Can we can we talk about that for a second? Because that was the thing I was really struggling with too. Reading this book is that the book. Uh, and also, real quick, Java Book Geek Girl says that she was looking up references because she uh, wasn't. She's also a child of the '90s and was mm -hmm. having to look up stuff, but is still really enjoying it. I think just really quickly, the book does a really good job of not bogging you down with references to the point where you're not understanding the story, mm -hmm. but giving people like, then look this up, then look this up, and that's fine. But back to the anonymity of the internet for a second. Uh, as somebody who is on uh, social media and on Twitter specifically, I am very much against anonymity on the internet. I think that it is cowardly. Mm -hmm. I think it's a bad it thing. I think it leads to fake news and I think it leads to the state of the world right now. Mm -hmm. Literally, I think it's like the worst thing possible. I understand that, that part of what the book is saying and what a lot of people will say is that there are people who really need it because of, of their circumstances in their life and because of their social anxiety and I get all of that, but I've gotten to a point where I'm like, no, internet's too dangerous. Everybody needs to be boop, face value all the time. Yeah. And we need to focus on other things in terms of raising kids to deal with social anxiety, in terms of equipping people and young people especially to learn how to deal with that stuff that we're not doing in favor of we have to keep our privacy and our security. And, our, and I'm like, no, the Internet needs to be completely transparent to me. Well, I think you see that too and wait a little bit. We were saying that when I first read it, I didn't pick up as much of how angry he is. Yeah. Um, and you, you see that he's been bullied, he's been living in poverty, he's lost his parents, he's stuck with this aunt who's just using him for like food stamps mm -hmm. basically, or mm -hmm. the pay, government payout. Sucks. 
And, and I think part of it too is that his whole reality and everything that he is is because the Oasis is this open source free wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. and that you can be in there and be whoever you want to be. And I think that, that that concept is something to be celebrated, but the problem that hopefully you, know, you dive into in this book is that there, it is a fine line of whether or not that's a good thing because I think it is good to not judge people based on their actual appearance and anyone can be who they want to be. But once you don't know who someone is and they can't be held accountable for their actions, that's it. That's it's responsibility. It's accountability. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's accountability. So again, I, I, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, <laughs> okay, hell yeah, Hector, thanks. Yeah, I, uh, again, there's even a little section where Wade describes his physical appearance in the real world. And he's mm -hmm. like, I'm fat. I'm overweight, and I've it's because I sit, acne. right? I've got acne, and I, and so my avatar is like me, but a little bit taller, no acne, mm -hmm. really good muscles, and all of these things that I totally understand. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading this, I've and I'm like, that. this is heartbreak. Uh, we've all my done avatar, that. I made the perfect Come version on. of me for Elder Scrolls Online, Come and it on. took me like four hours to realize I made an identical Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> that was embarrassing and then, then for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so I, I, I totally get that, and I think that it's, it's, it's different when the game is described as just basically being uh, a second reality that everybody spends their time in. If this was it's a, the real, I mean, it's the real world. M the, the it's Facebook, currency, it's Twitter. But the currency in the Oasis the is, is the highest than yeah. anything else, and people work in there, and people go to school in there. And, but another issue that you see is that while he can read and watch movies and that was an element that I really liked of, I love of that. access of education an actual free education for anyone no matter where you are yeah. and being mm -hmm. exposed to art which I think is really important for kids and just and, keeps and getting cut from schools which the, the, is the, crazy. Yes, the Willy Wonka character in this book, mm -hmm. uh, forgetting the Halliday. guy's name, uh, Halliday, he gave the laptop computers that are for education for school purposes mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even though to get into the Oasis it's 25 cents, he gave them to everybody for free including a thing they described children in Africa. Like mm -hmm. everybody around the world would have one of these so, so that they can access. get that education. That's what the internet and should the be. The reason why he um, weighed at enrolled into the Oasis was because the government funding for the actual physical yeah. public school system Ugh. was depleted to the point where they were like trying to send the kids online to find free education, which would have been better anyway. Too real, yeah. But I think w with the Oasis, like we are one kind of people which is obsessed with pop culture sure. and geek culture and like if given the, the libraries of absolutely everything, I wouldn't be like, today I want to know about Sophocles or, of course you know, not. I'd yeah. be like, oh, let me do another watch of Buffy for the seventh yes. time. Mm -hmm. You know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that was a good one. I didn't plan this. Yeah. I didn't plan oh. this. Oh my God, it's like I knew. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got really excited. <laughs> but the, uh, you know, you have to keep in mind that there are people that are starved for information and knowledge and that would actually use that. Yeah. But you understand the appeal of the Oasis where mm -hmm. I can actually fly on a Firefly or the Serenity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But then they also have this school, so people are learning, you know, he's learning Latin, which we get into later. But yes. there's also, he explains that there is a level of classism in there even still because he can't afford totally. to go off world. Skins. So he yeah. can't level up mm -hmm. to to compete with the other um, egg hunters, which we'll get into. Mm. We should get into that whole thing because that's kind of the point of the Really story, quickly with Wade though, yeah. like I um, did a course about fantasy writing and like the kind of tropes that people always fall into. <laughs> Orphan child, mm -hmm. who's, you know, usually it's either, are they the chosen one? It's like the hero's journey, yeah. That's mm -hmm. exactly what it is. You know, Harry Potter is exactly mm -hmm. this as well. But I want to know, did you feel that when it was like, I'm poor, everyone hates me, I'm all alone, I have no friends, my only friend is an old woman who, you know, takes pity on me, and, you know, my parents died, and, and now kid. I'm thrust into this. Mm -hmm. Were you like, ah, oh, we've seen this before, or are you like, let's give it a go? I think, uh, I think most stories end up falling into some of those tropes anyway, and I think it's I think it's, it's like the, seven and that's it. Really? Yeah, and no matter which way how you yeah, tell oh the story, yeah, yeah, seven types. Just, yeah, yeah exactly. And so I think it's like, it's the same thing like if you have a prequel or mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's not necessarily about the originality of the structure of it. It's about, the I execution. mean, for me, it's about the characters, it's about the execution, yeah. it's about the themes that we're playing with, which is already, we've got such a wealth of like what, what privacy means and what control means and all of those things. So I think that that's a good framework to build something off of. So even while I did notice that and I was like, oh, poor, you know, poor yeah. Wade. But also I think too, you, you mentioned that, you know, we meet the best friend, we meet the girl, which we should 
Oh, need to talk okay. about Artemis. We'll talk yeah. about later. Artemis. But it Art does Remus. feel you it was get a the, checklist. It's, uh -huh. But you get the John. It's he references John Hughes a million times. I mean, that's mm -hmm. this is a John Hughes story. He's the nerdy guy that's put upon that gets hopefully gets the girl and get gets to win, you know, goes on this adventure. That's mm -hmm. one of their best friends. And yeah. has a good looking bully who picked on him for a mm -hmm. second in high school, yeah. but he they was more Revenge clever than the nerds. him. I mean, these are all, this is the classic yeah. 80s. It's all, it's something that we talk about at Nerdist of we try to be super inclusive and make sure that even if you don't know all these references, even if you're just getting into comics, you can join us. You can be a part of this conversation. There's no gatekeeping here. Yeah. Um, because that old school type of nerd, like maybe wouldn't let, Girls, t you know, there's like mm -hmm. this gatekeeping of some, and it's still around. I had a comment today. On the internet. I had a comment today. Why does this girl feel like she has to try and talk about sci-fi? She's clearly only doing it because she's in a conversation with guys. I had that today. I know Impressive. there was an audible. Who uh, was that? Right. Who that's was that? And like, it's how is that still a thing? Yep. And it's and that's what we need to fight against. But this very much feels pulled from that. Yeah, yes. that sort of mentality. And I'll tell you how that's happening. This is almost like the geek's redemption, especially yeah. in the 80s when you didn't have the internet. All you had yep. was retained knowledge. Mm -hmm. You couldn't be like, oh, I remember the episode of do, 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 got it. Um, and I feel mm -hmm. like here, like the jocks are always starting to start in trying to start something. It happened twice in two chapters mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. he goes to his public school um, online and straight away, boom, there was a quip from someone and he had the quick return and it was like, you know what, I know that sucks, but I had to do it. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, and he's then like, he, I know it's it's low, yeah, but it's high school. But this is what you have to do. And <laughs> yeah. it's like, is it? Yeah. Oh, oh, great, you're a dick. But he is a high school senior. I don't know, that's not how I yeah. was doing it. And then straight away <laughs> into the headquarters, it was like, hey, let's talk about things we love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And someone comes in and goes, do yeah. you actually know about this? Do mm -hmm. I? I know that and the next thing. Boom. And they're yeah. like, oh, you're a god. And he's like, right. <laughs> and I'm reading this yeah. being like, <laughs> yeah. this is Ernest Klein being like, suck on that, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is totally I wrote a like movie. <laughs> 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 then I wrote a book and sold it as a movie. <laughs> Bill Berg's directing it. And it's all that all useless <laughs> shit I remembered, it's making me money now. <laughs> exactly. And that interview um, yeah. It's fine, and he's a lovely, lovely guy. But it's so Does obvious like the that? second time. <laughs> <season. Yeah. laughs> it's imperfect. The yeah. second time reading it, it's knowledge is power. Knowledge yes. is popularity. Knowledge is what you need. And if you can retain these useless things and serve it back to someone, that means you are cool to me. I Even hope that he uses knowledge in the future. in Because uh, I do think that, like, learning about yourself, learning how to solve problems, like, that could be in here in the book where it's mm -hmm. more than just because there's a reason because okay so here's something that you brought up so we've got this quest briefly how it, you you guys have read it so you basically know what happens but basically they're looking for this easter egg in the oasis to uh inherit control of oasis yes. and all of holiday's uh it's billion dollars, yeah. something uh, ridiculous mm -hmm. like that. And there's a corporation that's trying to gain uh, control of this so that they can monetize yes. Oasis, which would make it so that obviously we don't get these free libraries, we don't get all of this and great access. And the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Exactly, which we all know is not a good thing. So then you have this, um, this, this mission that everyone's been on for years and years and years, and one of the things well. that you were saying was four or five years and no one has solved it. Why is he the one? And I'm, I hope that in this we figure out that there is a re he's not just the chosen one, but it's just he is using this in a certain way. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I feel like it's supposed they, they to be lean, someone like this. They got to lean more into the Willy Wonka side of the story yeah. because Charlie got that because he was like the best person, mm -hmm. right? That's the point of that story. I said yeah. good day, sir. You're a good person, so right. you will be rewarded for being a good person and stay a good person. And when he was chewed out and yelled at, he's like, okay, I guess I didn't get, like he didn't throw a fit, he didn't, I hope they lean more into that of like, he specifically programmed it so that an 18 year old or a kid in high school yeah. Which is what you were saying. was gonna win this because all adults suck. I'm yeah. really hoping that's what Halliday's plan was as the Willy Wonka character of this and world of like, I gotta give it to the youth because they're kind of innocent mm -hmm. and they will be able to fix the world because everybody else who's an adult doesn't want to fix the world. They just want to see it burn. They just want to get and money. They want to make money. They want yeah. to make money. I know that Halliday's like biggest pet peeve is greed. Mm -hmm. He thinks the whole world is fueled by this greed that he wants nothing to do with. And he's yet, a big fan of it. was a somebody who was in in in, in possession of two hundred and forty billion dollars. Yes, there's still and there's immense so poverty. much immense poverty <laughs> in the United States. It's like it's funny. Like when you do see um, 
the first interaction with Artemis and Wade, which we'll get into, mm -hmm. that one of the questions she asks, she almost challenges his integrity. Yes. What are you going to do with the prize money? What would you do? And he's like, no, I'm going to build a space station and well, lots of food and I'll just send everyone up and I'm going to play video games all day long in my little happy space. And this and planet's done and we're done. I'm really hoping that the girl character doesn't like, like fix famine. him. I'm really, I'm really hoping that it's, it's not a manic pixie dream girl that tells him, like, be that a good person. Be a good person, Wade, and then he's going to learn how to be a good It's like, I hope Wade figures it out on his own, and I hope that Halliday's whole mission was a, a way to, to do that. That Halliday saw the way the world was going, and he wanted to pull back. And maybe, you know, there's great things about the 80s. There's amazing things about the 80s. And I think that there was a feeling of young people, like in many decades, of young people... Um, Figuring out who they were and mm -hmm. looking forward to a brighter future. Uh, I think that you can say that for a lot of the media that was coming from the 80s. A lot of, a lot of you know, John Hughes type stuff, mm -hmm. movies, television shows, Star Trek The Next Generation was in the 80s. Stand By the, Me. The Stand By Me. The There's lots of things about young people going, you need to be good, stay good, and then make the future better. Now it's instantaneous impact. Instantaneous mm -hmm. impact in the media? Is that what you're saying? Like movies today are all about instantaneous yeah. impact? Like Captain Kirk is immediately captain yeah. of the Enterprise and saves journey. the world immediately, and it's not a, an earned thing. Mm -hmm. I, to just go back a little bit, I, I, the character of Wade, who had the alliterative uh, first name and last name, yes. which the, my first thing was like, that's comic book. And then when they yeah. revealed that his dad, who got his mom pregnant, and they never were in love or married or anything, yeah. loved comics, but then got killed because he was like robbing a liquor store. I was, and that's why he named his son that, because he liked comics. I went, all right, well done. Well played. I'm, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm still in it. I'm still in it. <laughs> but um, that character is not doing anything for me. He seems too cliched. He seems too much like cookie cutter that we're supposed to fit into his character. And again, the only reason he's not a dick is just because there's a bigger bully in his world. Otherwise, like, you're a dick, too. Like, you're a dick. Like, I know you got a crap life, but, you know, yeah, it, this, it's... Yeah, this kid has, it sounds like he's got a really solid head, head on his shoulders. Yes. Like, he yeah. wants to get good grades, even though it's not really happening. He's trying really mm -hmm. hard, even though he shouldn't really... And I understand being, This kid being, should have a needle you know, in his arm. Like, let's be honest. Because that's what he saw. His yeah. mom's in the other room, yeah. doing sex talking for money, like, to make ends meet. She's trying, but at the same time, like, she was dealt a, a terrible card. He mm -hmm. was dealt, the like, as just the as worst. bad a card. The worst. And yet, he, everything's great. He's mm -hmm. got a positive attitude. That doesn't really... I, I mean, I, the psychological side of things, he would be <laughs> not in a good way. The thing that has been drawing me into the book and made me really, really like this first section thus far is the world. Yeah. Is the fact that they're setting up this horrendous future where nobody gives a shit and the only escape is Facebook, I mean the Oasis. <laughs> and you're just like, man, this is idiocracy levels of calling it out. Like yeah. this is going to be, mm -hmm. the only thing that's inaccurate is that there's no reference to a uh, Star Wars movie beyond the prequels, uh -huh. yeah. which is like a real easy fix, Ernie. You just got to go in there and uh, we'll, we'll get to that part. <laughs> but the, where, where he goes, um, uh, uh, Hall 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 Halliman, what's the guy's Halliday. name? Halliday. Halliday. Described the holy trilogies, including Indiana Jones, and at one point he pretended that he, that any Indiana Jones movie from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull on didn't exist, and I agree with him. And they still got Steven Spielberg to direct this movie, so <laughs> well done, <laughs> well done. But um, other than that, everything in the real world is super accurate. Yeah. And the fact that you have to have That's money scary. to be able to fly around the digital world and go to the Star Trek land and Middle Earth and all these is super accurate. So I'm with the world 100%. This yeah. main character is not doing it for me. Um, L can we talk about the uh, the female character, Artemis? Let's do it. So a little bit of setup for this it. one. Um, he finds the first tomb, which has the copper key. He makes it in there. He blitzes through it like it was nothing. And the first time. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's because it's a Not because he's the chosen <laughs> one. <laughs> it's not a, I mean, if we're not playing this as if, if this was er Ready Player One, the video game. No, we wouldn't have as the character gotten through that the first time. Like, you know, it's a shortcut. Do like a but he couldn't because someone had been there every single night mm -hmm. for the last two That's weeks true. trying to get in there, and that is Artemis. <gasps> the same girl whose blog he looks up every single morning who he's cyber in love with. Oh, mm -hmm. man. And but now it's okay they meet in real life. Because he's not gross about it. Mm -hmm. And also it's cool because he doesn't like like super tall chicks with like big boobs. Like He likes them curvy. Mm -hmm. And it's cool because she's, she's real pretty, <laughs> but she's not like too pretty. Like yeah. She's approachably pretty. And she's and super cute. And out of the six or seven like billion people like in the world at this time, yeah. so just adorkable. happens to be yeah. her that does it. Well, because, you know, they have every single thing in common. And, like, she's really good. Yeah. She's a real good She's gamer. got a dorky laugh. And, like, yeah, yeah. she's not too put on. Yeah. And she rambles when she's nervous just like him. And even though you can make yourself look like anything, she's still making herself look like herself at least as far as Wade's concerned. And he's like, gonna hold on to that hope. Yeah. So he's not gross about it, Matt. So like, it's for real true love. <laughs> like, it's like, he for real loves her. And once she gets to know him, once she gets to know him, then she will fall in love with him too. Like she'll want to hang out with him. Like it makes perfect sense. It's great. The it's only problem at great. the moment <laughs> is that she is incredible 
incredibly competitive and this isn't just a game for her. This is like, this is it. Like there are gunters. I really can't say that word. <laughs> what does it sound like? A gunt. <laughs> What's a gunt? When you drop, you, your gut drops to your... <laughs> oh. Australians are the best. That's great. Yep. We call that a, a fupa. A fupa. Yeah. That's right. Found out about that one, didn't uh -huh. I? Because I used gunt and front, offended a lot of people. Front upper <laughs> pouch area is what we'll call it. Mm -hmm. Front upper pouch area. But yeah. the gunt is, and it's two hundred forty billion dollars. And if mm -hmm. this is a kid who's lived in poverty his whole life, mm -hmm. a Why pretty girl debunks no. all of that. A yeah. pretty girl just goes, you know what? I'll give you a clue. I'll yeah. help you because go on the other side of the that part that in your pissing. hair is just making my thoughts. oh that, no that actually made perfect sense to me <laughs> what because this kid was raised on Revenge of the Nerds because uh, if we can talk about eighties pop culture yeah. for a second here's the bad thing about eighties pop culture yes from nineteen eighty 1980 to nineteen eighty nine all of the movies were about young uh, 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 oppressed nerds getting the girl weird science and that is an awful message because that shit does not happen. Yeah. You ha that, that that is not how the world works. So it's also ob it's also objectifying and making this like a creature like some something to be attained. A prize to be won. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, she is worth more than two hundred and forty billion dollars. Huh. And she's not even nice mm -hmm. initially. Like mm -hmm. what we're seeing right now, she's incredibly defensive. She doesn't care for him at all. She is manipulating him to get information. That's mm -hmm. why I liked her in the beginning. But then when she was nice and they were chatting, I was like, don't be friends with him. Yep. <laughs> go get that go get yep. that clue. But because you're Yes, guy, we're way yeah. Men and also he grew up on the eighties. He grew up on that stuff. He's eighteen, so he doesn't know jack ass about anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and A also a kid who has lived on food stamps his sure. whole life knows two hundred and forty billion dollars. But again, he escapes into reruns of family ties. Yeah. So this is not a person who's living yeah. in the real world. Yeah. And that's the thing I love about this book and hate about this mm -hmm. book. I'm reading this and I'm going, I love pop culture. I love it. And I have loved it since I was five years old. And I have been submerged in the world of comic books and I have stupid arcane facts in there that I should not have but have now been able to make me money because I'm getting yes. hired in ridiculous places here in Los Angeles to go, hey, come and talk about this stuff. Yep. It's valuable now. They're making movies that are making billions of dollars. Because when I was five, book, I should have written a book. But <laughs> I was, when I was five, I was like, hey, they should make movies of the stuff I love. It would make a billion dollars. <laughs> like I knew this stuff was amazing. So the problem is, is that this kid is retreating too much into pop culture. And as I'm reading it, I am asking myself if I do the same. Yeah. And I feel like the reason that, when I was a kid, I wanted to be president. I wanted to be president of the United States. I vote for you. And uh, when <laughs> I, I learned, would so vote for you. when I thank you so much. And <laughs> when I learned that much. politicians were pieces of shit, I went, nope, I'm not going to do that. Now I wanted to. My, my dream then became, I want to work on a cartoon show because when I was a kid, cartoons, things like Animaniacs and Batman the Animated Series affected me so deeply that I believed I became a good person because of that, mm -hmm. in part because of what I was observing and, and, and absorbing, and comic books as well. All of my, I didn't have religion growing up, I didn't read the Bible, I didn't get morals really from my parents, but I got it from television, and I, I mean, get some from my parents, but television and comic books, and with great power comes great responsibility. And a bunch of old Jewish dudes in the 60s and earlier were giving me religious st stories with colorful costumed men and women, and that's how I learned to be a good person. But when I decided I don't want to be a politician, I'd rather work on a cartoon show because I want to affect kids the way I was affected. That's better. I don't want to deal with adults. They're gone. They're ruined. You know, <laughs> we grew up in we grew up with the, nope. like the, the Monica Lewinsky scam mm -hmm. and it just got worse from there. Yeah. Politicians are the worst people on earth. That we now all of us now. know it's all too true. But with last year, with the fact that Donald Trump got elected, I went, maybe I was too um, uninformed or uninvolved. And uh, maybe a lot of us are too uninformed and uninvolved. And there's no problem with loving this stuff. But if you do what this book is doing and tell us a character like Halliday has so much power, so much influence that he goes, now all of the world will become obsessed with the 80s and I'm out. That's a lot of power. Yeah. Yeah. And the 80s was not super stellar unless you were a nerdy white guy, mm -hmm. a nerdy straight white guy in media. Yep. In which case, 80s is your, that is your sweet spot. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm, I'm like, I, I remember when I thought that Revenge of the Nerds was gross. I remember when I would watch it and not think it was gross, and then when I did. Mm -hmm. and, and it's this, a little rapey. It's, it's the most, super it's, rapey. It's, it, 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 character literally uh, rapes somebody in that movie. It's like, it's yeah, awful. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact then you're like, one day. <laughs> so I'm, I'm reading this and I'm like, this is super fun. I'm really, really enjoying this and I feel guilty. I feel guilty that I have uh, submerged myself in this world as a means of escapism, absolutely, but also because I'm like, the world is so shit, I think the, the way to fix the world is through stories and through storytelling. 
And that would be my hope. But it's like, but that didn't even work because everybody sucks. And it maybe people will take the wrong things from stories. And that's kind of, I guess that turned into a rant about this book and no, how I, I think felt, feel about it. It's, it's but it's what up. it's about. Yeah. And, and I got a lot of that towards the end when he got into the dungeon. Up until then, I was with it. I'm like, the world is fantastic. I totally get this. But when he got into the dungeon and, 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 and when he interacted it? with Artemis, uh, I was like, I think I know. I, 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 I just, it felt very much like a, a cliche movie. Uh, His interaction the with her is very, it's very like the, the geek from John yeah. Hughes movies. Yeah. But I do think that, so we've only, we've got many more. I'm, honestly, I mean, I remember the arc of the book, but I'm picking up a lot now reading it. Mm -hmm. I hope that as we get into it and we learn more about the characters, because we're only a fourth in and we're already like first clue. So there's yeah. a lot more to happen, sure. I think, um, going on. But I hope too that, there, there are good things to be found in this book and in this world, and there are absolutely bad things to be found in it. And I totally agree with you. Like, that, there's this, this idea that like that '80s nerd is the is that archetype is the one that bullies people online. That is the one that you know. And so it's it's learning hopefully through this book that there are real people. Everyone can be involved in this, and and hopefully that. I think Artemis's plan is awesome that she wants to share that with the and whole world. And whole famine. Yeah. Like, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. That's the big picture. That's what they spent the first three chapters building, mm -hmm. that there's big problems to be fixed, and she actually wants to fix it. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it's. I think it, it is saying that there's people that crave anonymity, crave it for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. They crave mm -hmm. it to be the person that they couldn't be, and that's, the one that can. And it's not even their fault. And it's mm. not even their fault. That's the worst thing, is that I don't even feel... I feel for Wade. I don't. I mean, I, I think he's a dick, but it's also like the, the, the book did a really good job of setting up exactly why he is the yeah. way that he is. Yeah. And he's not offensive. He's not uh, vulgar. He's not. Well, he's a little vulgar, but he's not like mean. You know, he's not a bad person because yeah, we're he's spending. Not, yeah, he's we're not spending time to grow. I mean, this this is if this is a hero's journey for him. Yeah. There are lessons to be learned here about responsibility when you inherit something like that. Something that maybe Holiday never learned that he closed himself off and, and he wanted to build something to share with him but then he kind of disappeared for the last few years of his life they're mm -hmm. saying that he was a recluse no one knows what happened to yeah. him Fifteen during years. those years yeah. so mm -hmm. what was happening to him why did he close this off why didn't he trust anyone to do that and how do you avoid getting har so hardened by the world around you that you don't think that that much money and power can make a difference and yeah. good in the world yeah mm -hmm. it, it means the world's not worth saving yeah and mm. so what does that mean? And the create your own world, but is that the right thing to do? In the chat, is there any way we can go back up to something Patch said, which was really quite brilliant? Mm. Oh, he I said really something and then everyone just went, yes! I really liked what uh, Dark Aardvark said. I think that uh, Wade breezed through the first one because they, the story needed a reason for him to stand out to Artemis. I totally could see that. Mm -hmm. I totally could see that. And I think just for the efficiency of the story, Here you know, uh, they did a good job of setting up the, the, the joust game which oh, is really cool i just played Wait. joust in an arcade in new oh, york really? over the break at oh, like cool. a bar wow. at a barcade no mm. way and, uh, before reading this before reading this Get completely out. so uh. me and my girlfriend were playing joust for the first time and i was familiar with it she had no idea she's like what is this is weird i'm like yeah this is the weirdest game ever you're on ostriches yeah. and you do the thing so reading that i really enjoyed that part and i love the imagery of um the, the the lich king or whatever the itch king going oh good game <laughs> like hitting the thing being like ah damn it <laughs> yeah. good game like that was great i love that the world building is so good and i really hope that um spielberg i mean i never thought they could make this into a movie no, because of all the oh i'm gonna hate the movie I'll and i have you guys to blame because i'm reading <laughs> this book for the first time you before i see the movie blame. and i'm they like oh, you guys i'm gonna hate it I'm we're glad so that much. you picked this one this uh, is a fun one to talk about but there's the patch comment yeah patch in the chat said this is a book that continues to oh no <laughs> <laughs> wait stand by everybody stand this by. is there a book go. that continues to exploit and show the trappings of culture oh. and possession oh on the edge of our seats with this okay, one. We, we Culture got it. and possession at the expense of community and humanity. Yeah. Bro that's, that's so, brilliant. It's so Patch. indulgent, isn't it? Yes. This is very indulgent, which is why I loved it. Yeah. The first time it's I... It's so much fun. I read it. And when I tweeted out today that we were reading this, 95% mm -hmm. of my feed was like, this is the best book. I love it's it. It's so love much it. fun. And I'm like, yes, you are my people. And then one mm -hmm. person's like, you know what? No. Nah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? Why? And reading it again, I'm like, oh, yeah. I think I, it's, it's I, I, it makes me too. feel guilty because I, I feel like I'm sacrificing humanity and community. No, I because of oh, you. you know, do. I was like, thank you. This is really like coaxing me back into why I escape. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> and thanks mm -hmm. for being another way to escape what's going on sure. by, you know, the inception of escapism within this book, within that book. It, yeah, <laughs> and they keep going. It's, it's very meta. Yeah. But I do feel like reading it right now, mm -hmm. if we had read this book six months ago. For sure. Diff I mean, different oh, years ago absolutely. and two years ago. Oh my I read God! It. A and now totally that different. Exp I think it's yeah. it's the weight of something that I think a lot of people are going through right now, which is, well, I thought everything was terrible, so I didn't want to engage. Like I mm -hmm. actively would not engage or argue with people because I was like, well, I'm not going to change their mind, and I think that that is a horrible viewpoint of blah 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 blah. And so I think that we're now in this place where I think there can be a middle ground. I think we should use places that champion pop culture to be mm -hmm. inclusive, to find other, that's mm -hmm. something that we really try to do here at Nerdist and Geek mm -hmm. and Sundry is to make sure that we're hearing different voices, we're letting people in, we're, we're not just catering to one type of fan and that we're having larger conversations about what representation means mm -hmm. in culture. I saw, you know, the Diego Luna stuff that, that you oh, shared so out the other day. Cry. I mean, it was, so it was amazing. <laughs> and so I think there is, a there is because after the election I thought, well, what's my, what am I doing? Like, mm -hmm. what, why am I doing my job? And I think that mm -hmm. you can find power in connecting with other people and finding ways to, yes. we've already talked about so many things and personal experiences just in this book club so far about yeah. how we identify with characters and yeah. how we communicate with other people and we're talking about it now. So I think there is power in that. We just have to be aware of it and mm -hmm. everyone is hyper aware of it right now. Mm -hmm. So it's good that we're reading it right now. Even oh, if it's, it's, it's a very bleak. bleak. It's, it's bleak. great. Yeah. It, it's, it's like, it's almost like, um, uh, want, I want to prevent this future. Yes. But yeah. I also still want there we're to be. sliding straight into it. Going, into it. Ha -ha. Yeah, I still <laughs> want there to be something With like the Oasis. Blade. Yes. When I was a child, I, my, my idea of heaven was that uh, uh, there would be every book, every movie, every comic book, and mm -hmm. it would be at my fingertips. And literally now we have that. Like it's there's the library it, it, in Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we I'm have that sad. now. <laughs> you know, I, I, I want it to be on the Starship Enterprise, not because we're flying through space, but that part of it, but mostly because it had every movie and comic book and TV show in their computers, in their data banks. It's all there. It's the future. Everything's you know on a drive this big. And I love that idea. And... Uh, 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 I've lost my train of thought, uh, but you okay. I'm going to tell future. you something that's going to destroy you and crush you, and mm -hmm. it kind of way tapped in on it as well. The amount of stuff out there in the world that you want to see, yeah. you cannot actually physically do it in your lifetime. Yes, I know. You can't consume it. It's so it sad. You it's so sad. That's oh. that was that that's the most unrealistic thing about the story so far. Oh, we I watched three yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, you didn't. You had a list to get through that was as long as your entire mm -hmm. body. Yeah, why are you watching this one three times if you've got other things that you, you still do have to read? Do you want to be the best? <laughs> Which thing did he say you watched three times? That. Family ties? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah, a couple other, other ones where like late he loves like Lady Hawk and yeah. All that stuff so many times. It's like, well, but don't you have other stuff to watch and read? I bet you do. He tries. Well, he tries to say, book? when That's you don't true. have a life, twelve hours a day. I'm like, no, dude. Even then, it's physically impossible yeah. Yeah. to watch all of every episode of Star Trek, uh, every cartoon of GI Joe, Schoolhouse Rock, He Man, Thunder the Barbarian, Land of the Lost, Simpsons, uh, all these movies, every book. Every book, and by the way, is there any female authors in this list that he just rambled through? No. I didn't think so. I thought I thought I saw Rowling in there. I was like, okay, oh, maybe. Rowling. No, she's not in there. Oh, she's uh, <laughs> And it's Rowling. Rowling? J.K. Rowling? <laughs> J.K., yeah, just kidding. Just it's Rowling. Rowling. With homies, man. J.K. Okay. Rowling. Uh, there's a joke that we should help me remember that. Douglas Adams, Kurt Vonnegut, Neil Steph Stephenson, Stephenson. Did you also do a checklist, though? Was it? Yeah. Richard yeah. K., mm -hmm. Morgan, Stephen King, Orson Scott Card, Terry Pratchett, Terry Brooks, Bester, Bradbury, Haldeman, Heinlein, Tolkien, Vance, Gibson, Ga do, Gaiman, do, 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 uh, do. Sterling, Moorcock, Scalzi, Zelanzi. What? Moorcock? <laughs> I don't know. That's enough from you. But no rolling? <laughs> Well, it is that time again. No. This is what we do at the end of every uh, single episode. We challenge you, if you accept to do it, to read the next part of the book. We are going up to chapter 21. So just the next 10 chapters finish at chapter 21. So read to chapter 20. With that one, we'll be talking about themes as well. But, you know, we want to hear from you. You guys are saying some great things in the chat. And we love that we can communicate these sorts of thoughts with you as well. So come back next week. Same time. We'll be here. Mm -hmm. And also, we are always looking for it, uh, forward to our next book. I mean, you keep reading all of the ones that are suggested anyway, so it's almost yeah. redundant <laughs> what you suggest. If you've got any recommendations, so hit us up. You can uh, say it on the chat. You can tweet us, tweet at us, at Nerdist, at Geek and Sundry, or join Team Alpha with the hashtag Alpha Book Club. That's Get those this. recommendations in. I'm running out as well because I'm so consumed with this one. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hector. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble. I'm liking the book. 
not loving it, but we'll see what happens next time. Yeah, thank you, Rachel. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. I'm I'm so glad we're reading this one. I feel like it's super timely and fun. I mm -hmm. always say my best stuff to you before we start the show. My name is Morg. <laughs> we'll be back next week. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Bye.